Okay, so let's talk about storyboarding. If you're anything like me, you know exactly what it's like to be super run and gun all the time, go to a shoot, have little to no plan, and then come home, throw together an edit out of thin air, and repeat the process. And honestly, while I do think that having a run and gun mentality is a super valuable skill on set sometimes, I also really, really believe that it is a super valuable skill to learn how to plan and actually communicate your ideas. Over the past year, I've had a lot of practice with storyboarding and I can say it's been super, super helpful to me, but I also know that it can also feel very monumentally overwhelming. So I'm gonna try my best to break down some steps into how you can start storyboarding your projects so that you're not totally overwhelmed. The first step I would honestly advise to do when making a storyboard is to identify your story. Simply, what is it that you're trying to convey? If you're having trouble writing out your story or figuring out your story, honestly, a way that I've found is super helpful for me to start getting into the practice was to start writing voiceovers. So voiceovers are honestly a super easy way to kind of just like blatantly tell your story is to just write it out in voiceover form. All right, so now that you're ready to organize your shots, what we're gonna do before we even do that is we're gonna break our story into scenes. Now all you have to do is work scene by scene. Scene one, what are the shots that I need to visualize to complete scene one? Scene two, what are the shots that I need to visualize to complete scene two? I'll first start off by saying that I like to use a program called Milanote to organize, honestly, the entirety of the project. I'm a very, very visual person. And what I can do in Milanote is take a bunch of screenshots or reference images and put them into columns to organize my scenes. Now you kind of get where I'm going with this. Obviously breaking up things into scenes is a little bit tricky. So you do want to kind of go through your story and visualize, okay, where could scene cuts be? And when are we going to be changing locations in the story? Or when are we going to be changing actions in the story? Okay, so now that we've kind of got our story, we've got our story broken down in the scenes. Now where do I find reference images? And the main tool that I use to find reference images is Shot Deck. Shot Deck is essentially an incredible database of super cool film stills taken from movies and TV shows. And now if you're kind of asking yourself, well, I've actually never filmed a scene like this. I have no idea what it looks like, I have no idea what it should look like, and I don't have any ideas. This is honestly where Shot Deck also shines, is that if you don't really have any ideas for how to visualize your scene, you can go into a database like Shot Deck, type in something like making breakfast, and you'll get honestly a bunch of different options for shots that come up in the database. And you can kind of use those as references to kind of help paint a picture of like, oh, I really like this shot, or oh, I really like this shot. And you can kind of start to visualize and use Shot Deck to help you visualize what your scene actually should look like. If you're doing stuff that's super specific and you have reference videos, I often like to pull stills from reference videos. So if I'm trying to do a basketball spec ad and I want to get some shot ideas. Sometimes I'll go into YouTube and I'll type in like Nike's basketball advertisement or something along those lines so that I can watch a video for reference and I can actually take screenshots of the YouTube video to use in my project. Some people have also asked me if I ever use like sketched out images. Honestly, for me, doing hand-drawn images is often my last resort. If I really, really can't find a reference shot or if my like idea is so out there and crazy that I, I can't find any visual references online, I will resort to actually drawing it out in Milano. It's, it's kind of hard and if you suck at drawing, it might not be like the easiest way to do it, but there is a time and place for sketched out images. Another question that I've gotten is when I'm finding reference images, do I pay attention to framing or lighting or both? Do I have to find images that fit 
the mood and the tone of the piece. Typically when I'm doing my storyboards, I try to prioritize framing and action. I usually develop a completely different Milanote board and I'll dump all of my lighting and mood inspiration onto that board. Sometimes if you're super lucky and you're you know, pulling stills from like a basketball Nike ad and you're like, well, actually that fits my mood and my lighting and my framing and my action. You'll get really lucky sometimes. I've also gotten a lot of questions about how do I communicate like the camera movement like through the storyboard. Typically what I do is when I do find reference images, if there's a certain shot that I want and I have a reference image for it, but the camera movement's actually a little bit more complicated, then I'll typically always write captions underneath my reference photos to really explain like, hey, here's the camera movement and here's the direct action for this shot that I'm referencing. And to kind of finish this video off, I will give you guys a few more bonus tips. One of my first bonus tips is to try to keep in mind that you should be incorporating kind of like a healthy distribution of tights, mediums, and wides. So this is definitely where I've screwed myself a little bit in the past is I have forgotten to get a variety of shots while I'm shooting. It's not always necessary if you have certain ideas for shots and you know that they're never gonna change, like this shot is always gonna be a tight shot, then that's fine. But err on the side of caution with that, it is nice to kind of get a healthy distribution of shots so that in post-production, if you actually find that you don't wanna cut to a tight shot and you'd rather have a wide, you have that option. My second little bonus tip that I have also failed to do in the past is to remember to get kind of environment texture shots. This is something that I actually really like to incorporate and I'm really good at kind of finding these shots on the fly, but sometimes if I'm too wrapped up in a storyboard, I kind of forget to go grab texture shots. Shots to just establish kind of like the feeling of where you are. So if I'm in a city, you know, getting cars moving by or city buildings or like just gritty, textures, I, it's hard to explain it, but just like textures that kind of help place the viewer in the environment of like, where are we? How does it feel? What's the vibe? And that can also help with transitioning from place to place. If you're finding that you don't know how to transition from one scene to the other, sometimes in really stylistic editing, you can definitely use these texture shots to do some of that transitioning. And bonus tip number three would definitely be to remember that storyboards are a guide. You do not have to strictly follow them. And you also have to remember that when you're on set, things always change, things never go according to plan. And this is where your run and gun mentality is really gonna come in handy because you're gonna be able to problem solve when shots that are on your storyboard don't end up working out. But honestly, that's kind of all the tips I have for you guys on storyboarding for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and remember that storyboarding can definitely be a huge asset to you because it can help with your communication. It helps you know your story more. It helps you know your message. It helps build trust with clients when you kind of know what you're doing and it just helps with overall efficiency. I know storyboarding can be a little bit daunting of a task, but you do have to remember that creativity is definitely a muscle that needs to be exercised and sometimes it's not really that fun, but I promise you it'll help you and push you as a creative. And the more you do it, like anything else, the better you will get at it. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and tune in next time to want to make another video because I'm going to try to be more consistent on this and I love you all. Love